OK. Let's see now how these different prices might have been determined. First, we need to bring back the graph that shows the market. When our firm makes normal profits at a price of P2, things will continue like this indefinitely. The market is in equilibrium and the firm is in equilibrium, so there's no pressure for anything to change. At P1, however, the price has again been set by the intersection of the market demand and supply curves, equilibrium. But our firm is making more than normal profits, it's also making economic profit. Sooner or later, other entrepreneurs will see that there is good money to be made in this business and will enter the market. And, as you might remember from demand and supply, one of the non-price factors that will cause a shift of the market supply curve to the right is an increase in the number of firms. And in our demand and supply relationship, we know that a shift of the supply curve results in a change in the price. Here, the selling price decreases and the quantity sold on the market increases because there are more suppliers. This continues until all the existing firms earn normal profits again. Now, let's look at what happens when the selling price is less than P2. If the selling price is less than P2, firms will not even be making normal profits and some firms may shut down, the owners moving to the next best job. Not all of them, though. Some entrepreneurs may decide to hang on in there. If some firms exit the market, supply will shrink and the supply curve will shift up and to the left. This will force the price up and the quantity sold will decrease. And that is how economic profits or losses can affect the market supply and determine different prices. The market